Let's raise the big question just now. Has Imran Khan pushed his country into a deep constitutional crisis? Is the Pakistan army really going to remain neutral in this current crisis? Are Imran Khan's claims of a foreign hand a sham? Should India be worried about Pakistan's crisis? I'm joined by two very erudite, credible voices. Sharad Sabarwal, former Indian High Commissioner to Pakistan, and Etajaz Essen, former Pakistan minister with the PPP and also the leading constitutional authority. He's fought cases with Benazir Bhutto against Nawaz Sharif in the past. Appreciate both of you joining us. Etajaz Saab, to you first. Are we seeing a breakdown of law and order, a constitutional crisis in Pakistan with the Supreme Court now having to rule whether Imran Khan has a legitimate right to continue or dissolve the assembly in the way that he did? Uh, first, Rajdeep, let me say hello to uh, Shar. Uh, he's been a very dear friend. Uh, Likewise, and, uh, yes. He's had a Thank very uh, illustrious tenure in Pakistan. Uh, and many friends remember him very fondly and his Begum Sama. Uh, but uh, coming to this, whether there is a very deep constitutional crisis that has been created or not, uh, it would appear to be so. But uh, I think our courts are uh, capable of uh, um, addressing such uh, crises. And uh, it's not uh, uh, something that... Uh, they can. They would be in the woods, uh, completely. About our judges are uh, 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 well uh, <coughs> intentioned, and they are. Uh, uh, they they know the, their constitution, and they know the rights of uh, the people and various. Uh, you you officials. don't see the you don't sorry you don't see the Supreme Court coming under any pressure. You believe the Supreme Court in Pakistan today is capable of taking a stand firmly, independent of any pressures? The Supreme Court of Pakistan has gone uh, in, a, in, a, in a tangent and in, a, in, a, in an angle uh, that has been uh, uh, phenomenal since uh, uh, we had a very uh, popular movement for the restoration of the judges. Right. And uh, that was against uh, an action of an army chief president, uh, General Musharraf. And he wielded all the uh, strength of the uh, state and the coercive uh, de uh, departments of the state as well, uh, but uh, uh, was defeated in the, uh, in the ultimate analysis, was humiliated, right. is uh, lying in exile in uh, Dubai. Uh, so the, the, our courts have uh, uh, gone uh, seriously in a um, far better direction and on a far uh, better profile mm -hmm. uh, than, uh, unfortunately, we see about the Indian judiciary. But I don't want to go into I, I, I'm not going to go into the comparison today between Indian and Pakistani judiciary. We can have a separate debate on that. But as you said, you believe that the Pakistan judiciary at the moment is independent enough to take a stand. But Sharad Sabarwal... How do you see this playing out from an Indian perspective? We are seeing this kind of instability once again uh, rocking Pakistan. Interestingly, for now, the army seems to be playing a neutral role. How long do you see that happening? Well, you know, we uh, actually wish uh, Pakistan well. Uh, any uh, trouble in our neighborhood, uh, you know, is something which we wouldn't like. Uh, any instability in any country in our neighborhood. Um, but it's it's a it's a veritable constitutional crisis that Pakistan is facing. Mm -hmm. The opposition uh, has refused to accept the decision of the deputy speaker. Uh, now, uh, legal intricacies apart, which as essence uh, would know much better, and which would be argued in the Supreme Court of Pakistan. Uh, on the face of it, it looks like an illegal action because, you know, if this kind of thing is done, mm -hmm. any government uh, can persuade the speaker who is generally from uh, the ruling dispensation to declare a no-confidence motion against it. It, it is null and void. Uh, so uh, that is one problem. And then uh, the process, if it has to move forward uh, in the case of premature dissolution of the assembly, uh, uh, an election has to be held in 90 days. 
uh, a caretaker prime minister is to be appointed and the procedure required that you consult both the prime minister and the leader of opposition. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shabash Sharif, who is the leader of opposition, has said that he will not participate in that process. Uh, so the ball is in the court of the Supreme uh, Court now. Uh, and uh, we'll see what they decide uh, as far as the army is concerned. Mm -hmm. Look, it, it looks like, uh, it has looked like a political process all through. Uh, but it has had a subtext of army's predominance uh, in the army uh, in, in, in Pakistan. Now, let's not forget that uh, Imran Khan came to power in 2018 uh, with the uh, army support and the army engineering the election in his favor and tilting the electoral field in his, uh, uh, in his favor. Uh, and then they warded off threats to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, then differences emerged between him and General Bajwa. And uh, when those differences came out into the open, and there was a signal from the army leadership that uh, they would stay neutral in any political uh, uh, battles in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when uh, the opposition efforts to oust Imran Khan uh, picked, uh, gathered steam. Uh, that's when his allied parties to started talking to the opposition. That's mm -hmm. why... Uh, that's when the dissidents within his party found uh, their voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we are uh, where we are. Uh, the matter is with the Supreme Court. Uh, but the army's, the leadership's uh, uh, position is known. I think the differences are well known. And uh, I don't think General Bajwa trusts uh, uh, Imran Khan anymore. Whether that would influence the thinking of the court, mm -hmm. we'll have to wait and see. But do you believe, uh, uh, Sharad Samarwal, that when Imran Khan, for example, speaks of a foreign conspiracy, hints at the United States, do you get a sense that this is now someone who's got increasingly desperate and therefore will do anything, whatever it takes to somehow or the other cling on to power? Yeah, it's a, it's a clear sign of that. You know, this whole business of uh, foreign influence in bringing about this no-confidence motion uh, has been a very murky business. Things have not been clear. Now, it's been alleged that a foreign diplomat, while talking to the Pakistani ambassador, mm -hmm. uh, threatened uh, that Pakistan could be in trouble if this no-confidence motion doesn't succeed. Now, it would be most unusual uh, for a senior experienced diplomat to talk so openly about a constitutional process in another country. Even if we assume that the Americans uh, had engineered this or they were trying to influence it in any manner, they would do it quietly. They would not talk so openly about it. Uh, so this is something which he has taken up uh, when in a difficult uh, situation. Mm -hmm. And he's also using it to position himself for the future political battles and the election. Saying mm -hmm. here, I am a leader who resists Western pressure, who mm -hmm. uh, resists... Uh, pressure from the United States to uh, to safeguard Pakistan's interests. You know, uh, Etajaz Essen, purely from an Indian perspective, you know, we're looking at what's playing out in Pakistan. Do you fear instability? You know, you've got uh, uh, Zardari's party, the Zardari Bhutto party and uh, uh, the Sharifs aligning for now, but most believe this alliance is going to be short-lived. Do you believe Pakistan is heading for another spell of instability and do you fear therefore that the army sooner or later will step in? I think the uh, uh, the stabilizing factor mm -hmm. which has developed and emerged in Pakistan uh, is actually the courts mm -hmm. which have been uh, uh, had a poor record uh, prior to 2006 7 mm -hmm. but have had a, uh, quite a um, um, a stable and progressive, as well as uh, a, um, a, a respected role in society uh, in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, uh, the matter, in, if they remain in, if they go to court, uh, the court uh, was opened, uh, so to say, mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, on a Sunday to look at this uh, uh, matter. And uh, the, the first date was appointed, notices were issued for Monday, and today there was a hearing, the first hearing. Um, so the court took it seriously. And I think that uh, our army and our uh, uh, political parties will uh, ultimately, uh, and this is the tradition, have to uh, obey the court. 
Imran Khan may have gone gone way out of the crease. Mm -hmm. He's gone way out of the crease. There's no doubt about it. I have no doubt in my mind. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, uh, actually uh, smother a vote of no confidence, which is the property of the house after it has been moved and is not uh, something that can be disposed of by a ruling of a speaker. Uh, so you're, the property so you're saying, the in your view, Imran Khan has gone against the constitution of Pakistan. He's, as you said, moved outside the crease. The question is now whether he will be stumped by the court or not. Very quickly, Sharad Sabarwal, how should India see it? Should India be worried about what's happening in Pakistan or just allow it to play out? No, naturally, I mean, this is a process uh, which is internal to Pakistan. So, you know, India has uh, nothing to do with it, except, as I said in the beginning, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, um, you know, natural that India uh, would uh, not like instability in any country in its uh, neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, I may also add that, you know, the foreign and security policies of, of uh, Pakistan are controlled so tightly by the army uh, that the fate of a civilian dispensation has at best a marginal impact on Pakistan's external posture right. and its uh, key relationship. So it's not as if uh, a new dispensation had come about, any dramatic results would have uh, you know, appeared in terms of India-Pakistan relations. In any case, uh, even if a new dispensation comes about, elections mm -hmm. don't take place immediately. Uh, it would be uh, at a time when Pakistan will always uh, already be in an electoral cycle, when you know major foreign policy moves are ruled out. Their focus will be on uh, on, uh, on on so e your economy. Right. So you're saying, in a way, the army has an invisible hand. They have. They will decide which way Pakistan's foreign policy goes. But for now, at least, they seem to be playing the role of a neutral umpire when it comes to what's happening, at least in parliament. And therefore, the courts of Pakistan could well have a decisive say in what happens Rajdeep. in the next... For, yes, Rajdeep. yes, sir. Uh, permit me a word, uh, uh, because uh, Sharth has opened up a new uh, uh, chapter, a new uh, perspective to it, by bringing it to saying that the army has a particular role. Here, this situation has been created by uh, Imran Khan himself and his, his character and the various aspects of his character. To take a cricketing uh, uh, simile mm -hmm. or symbol, he appears to have uh, he, uh, taken a cheeky single <laughs> and gone to the wrong end after nine wickets down, a hundred to and five overs left. So he's gone on to the wrong end. He's, he has created the problem. Uh, it's not necessarily in uh, uh, the army or the opposition. The opposition is doing, I think, what they any opposition right. in any country would do if there were such a, a violation of the constitution or somebody trying to take such a, such a cheeky uh, single. It was a let, cheeky single. Let me leave it there. Clearly, Imran Khan could well be run out as a result, but that is for the courts to decide. Etajaz Essen, Sharat Sabarwal, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts here.